Hello there. Well, I'm in Dunbar, which is the birthplace of John Muir, a man who loved the great outdoors. We're just going for a wee walk. I haven't done a great deal of research, we're just going for a walk in the countryside. Um, following part of the John Muir Way, which is a long distance walking trail, uh, we're just doing about seven miles between Dunbar and East Linton. And there's just lots of nice things to see in Dunbar and uh, there's also nice things to see in East Linton and especially at Preston Mill, which is where we'll end the walk. Or end the video, rather. So we can anticipate lots of sort of sea views along the way. Uh, this is the old harbour in Dunbar. And... Um, I think rather than another side of this old harbour wall, I think the water, I think it's actually the sea. I, I don't think it's, I think we're beyond the Firth of Forth. And to be honest, I can't quite remember which sea it is. But I suspect that, I mean, I, I, I regard seas a wee bit like trees, and that you don't really need, need to know exactly which one it is. You know, if you're wandering about in woodland, you come upon a tree, you're thinking, is that a, a spruce or a, an elder or a pine? What is that? It doesn't really matter. It's just a tree. And I think it's the same with seas. It's just a sea. Although I think if you were the, were the captain of a ship, you might um, have a different view on that. You would want to know exactly what, what sea you were on. Um... But enough of this nonsensical waffling, let's just uh, head off.
got to watch. I've been sitting on these newly felled pine trees because they can be a little bit gummy. I just touched the end of one there and it's just gummy pine. It's bitterly cold and it's windy. I mean, I found a slightly sheltered spot here and my hips are a bit sore. I'm thinking, can things possibly get any worse? I mean, the weather forecast was for the temperature to be about 7 or 8 degrees, which I suppose isn't really warm, you know. Um, and wind speeds to be a similar sort of number. 7 or 8 miles an hour. But I suppose at the coast, it stands to reason you're probably going to get wind speeds a bit higher than the kind of average. Um, and it was just very windy. It's so windy that I just, I can't film in that. The camera shakes, the footage is unusable. Uh, so, you know. And I don't know what's going on just in the kind of um, fenced off area over there. Because there's um, what looks like emus, emu, emu, e the emus. That's, that's a word I don't say very often. I might have to practice that. Emus or ostriches. They, they don't look as big as I imagine ostriches are. So I think they're probably emus. And what they're doing there, I'm not entirely sure. It's maybe some kind of um, visitor attraction because I can see other things that suggest that it's maybe some sort of visitor attraction. Emu land or something. Anyway, a wee bit of respite here in this felled forest. I mean, if it wasn't for the wind, it would actually be a lovely day. And it is a lovely day. And I've got a pie in Dunbar. It's, it's called, I think they called it a breakfast pie. And I think you got a choice. The one that I selected was, uh, oops, upside down. I think this is a haggis one. But it's like haggis with, and I can't remember. I wish I'd got her to write it down. Haggis with. Bacon and sausage and beans or something like that. It's a kind of breakfast pie, you know. I thought that, that sounds good. That's a pie, you know. That, that. And it's heavy. So today got a train from Glasgow to Edinburgh and another train from Edinburgh to Dunbar walking to East Linton and I've got a bus from East Linton to Edinburgh and then a train back to Glasgow I was thank thankful that I could get all the trains that I wanted to get given that there are so many drivers either off with Covid or are isolating because they were near somebody who had COVID. But I carry on. There's a wee bird flitting about. Maybe I want a bit of my pie. I think the train service in Scotland is pretty good, but there's a part of me thinks that there's a kind of certain dinosaur element to either Scott Rail or Network Rail. And it, it may be a little bit hard for me to say what I mean by that. But I'll, I'll give you one example. It, in Glasgow Central, at low level, and I could be not exactly wrong here, but this may not happen all the time. But it has been, this is a situation that I've witnessed 
in the last few times I'd been in that station, and I suspect it's par for the course. You've got a overhead monitor beside each station platform, and it scrolls through something like five pages of text, ranging from the, the current train, or the train that's coming, where it's going, what trains are coming up for the next hour or so, and a little bit of information at the end. Such and such a station is no longer get disabled access or whatever. But what doesn't happen is that when a train actually pulls into the station and it's there on the platform with folk getting off and folk getting on, this overhead monitor is still scrolling through five uh, different pages. And, and that is, is what I think is just an absolute nonsense. If you've suddenly turned up at the station, you see a train on the platform and you're thinking, you're in a bit of a panic, you think, what train's that? You know, because you can't necessarily see the very front of the train and there might not always be um, destination LED kind of notices on the side of the train. You're like, what's that train going? And rather than, it, it, I mean, at that point, when the train's in the station, standing on the platform, that overhead monitor should tell you what train that is. It shouldn't be scrolling through five pages. I mean, come on, guys, what on earth? What is the issue there? Are we not able to sort that? And sort it is the word, because that's another kind of minor irritation as far as I'm concerned with ScotRail or Network Rail or whoever. They've come up with this new slogan, and I think it's something like, see it, see it, sorted. And it comes over the tannoy umpteen times, and you listen to it, you think, what the heck? How much did they pay for that? Did they pay some sort of... Um, big kind of PR company, a lot of money for that. A million quid maybe. Guy sat around the desk and one of them will say, I tell you what, what about see it? Like if you see something suspicious, say it, you can tell someday. And sorted, that's it sorted. How much did you guys pay for that? Because it's the most ridiculous slogan I've ever heard in all my life. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure that wee bird's waiting for me to go away so I can have that, that bit of uh, pie there. Uh, and I think I've probably moaned enough that I need to eat this. Um, it's not too far from here towards East Linton and uh, there's a, a very special treat uh, at Preston Mill, a lovely old mill, a jumbly collection of buildings that I have shown you before in a previous video. But with this 4K camera we'll get to see them a little bit better. Having said that, one of the drawbacks about having 4K is that if I do a close-up of my face, you can see the verdigris on my glasses. Uh, it's, it's much sharper. So that's maybe not a good idea. <laughs> maybe when I'm doing close-ups of my face I should have it on just ordinary high definition so that instead of verdigris it looks like kind of attractive greeny glow.
I just wanted to say a couple of words here. Um, on this section of the John Muir Way, the part that's beside the coast, the Firth of Clyde, and the sea, um, you'll see quite a lot of these huge concrete cubes, for want of a better word, absolutely massive things. You sometimes see just one or two scattered about, sometimes on the shore. It, this is a very impressive uh, arrangement of them. It's, it's all along the, the coastal side of this field here. And they're not just, uh, it's not just a single line, it's a double line. Um, and while I haven't looked into this, I think what these are is simply a Second World War defensive feature. So that if, <coughs> excuse me, um, if Germany carried out an actual invasion of the UK, of this country, and if they came ashore here, then men could get ashore here, but there's no way that they could bring any vehicles ashore because these massive concrete blocks would uh, stop any tanks or any vehicles at all from getting properly onto the land. And this is a very impressive length of these things, it really is. The amount of work that that must have taken to, to create this it's just uh, pretty awesome, you know. And th the lengths that this country went to, the UK, in order to thwart any potential invasion from Germany during the Second World War, it's simply astonishing. It's not just this or these, but the many other measures that um, most of which we probably don't know about. Absolutely amazing. Well, that was seven miles on the John Muir Way between Dunbar and East Linton um, and we're ending here at uh, Preston Mill which is just a hop, skip and a spit from East Linton. Uh, I've been here at Preston Mill uh, two or three times now and I just, it's such an amazing mill. Um, it's just a, it's just a fetchingly attractive jumble of buildings of various age and shape and size. It's just, uh, it, it, the more you look at it, the more it kind of tells you. 
I mean, for example, I mean, there's, there's pets all over the place. Um, and I've just noticed that the, the bottom step and these old steps going up there is curved and it looks, it, un, without question, it was, it was once a, a millstone, you know, the big round stones that the two of them to, to grind uh, grain or whatever they were grinding. So it must have maybe broke, it's no longer any use as a millstone, they've used it uh, as a step. <laughs> I just love it. Um, I meant to say earlier on, but at the moment I'm thinking about creating a, a new YouTube playlist in this channel called Ed's Food and Drink, where I can just try various food stuffs, soups, pies, maybe he'll make some soup uh, and try out different beers and things like that. Um, I'm not 100% certain that I'll, I'll do it. I'm just chewing it over at the moment. But I, I strongly suspect that as time goes by, this walking business will take a back seat. And uh, if I can do the, the food and drink stuff at home, then it'll save me having to put one foot in front of the other. Uh, but we'll, we'll see, you know, just uh, keep your eyes peeled in case that actually happens. Um, so, um, I don't know what else to say. I'm Eddie Burns. Bye for now.